now let's transition into performance reviews are coming guys if you aren't having performance reviews they will be coming many companies stop performance reviews during the pandemic why well they stopped it because they want to give managers time because now they have to balance their day personal commitments professional commitments they also gave or remove performance reviews because managers have to hire they have to staff up a lot of people money was coming out of trees falling from the sky businesses were crushing it we don't care about the performance reviews we just need to get you the people to work in your organization to do the work we don't care about we don't care about if they're performing high or not we got the money to pay for them with the flip of a switch in less than a full year the tide has changed now companies are saying we're going to squeeze, tighten up our belt a bit. We got bloated. We got heavy. I jumped on the scale and I saw that I was up 20 pounds. That's what companies are saying. I need to go on a diet. So let's reduce the number of people that we have. When companies go on diet, what happens? Layoffs happen, starting with contractors and so forth. So they're making the decision to lay people off. And they're going to continue to do so as the economy tightens. And if you aren't being coach if you are a high performer if you are not managing up you may be at risk going back to performance reviews companies are saying now that we've laid off a few more people let's find out who are good performers who are must-haves and performance reviews is the start of that it's the start of finding out who are your must-haves so a lot of companies now are bringing them back and here's how you can prepare for your performance review. Here's how you can prepare for your performance review. Because I want you guys to get to the money, man. I want you guys to get to the money. Performance reviews are coming back after a pandemic-induced hiatus. And here's how you can prepare for it if it's your first, okay? Or if your company is reinstating them, okay? There's one thing a performance review should never have, and that is surprises. That is surprises. Your performance review should not be a surprise to you and anything in it shouldn't be really a surprise to you if you're doing the right things okay however for employees who are new to the workforce many of you are just coming out of college many of you are in your first time role many of you at a first time company you haven't gone through a performance review at your company however for employees who are new to the workforce who will join during a pandemic a performance review may be a shock during a pandemic many employers suspended performance reviews to give managers more time to recruit talent during the great resignation, when all these people were quitting, they were like, man, you know what? We don't need to spend time doing performance reviews because people are leaving. Tens of people, 20 people in an organization leaving a company to go and jump ship to go somewhere else to get to the money. Why have performance reviews when we can, we need to invest the time into recruiting people, right? So companies said, screw the performance reviews to give managers a time to recruit the talent that they need. And today, firms like Goldman Sachs, Google, carparts.com are updating or reinstating performance reviews as a way to ensure employees are performing at their best and of deciding who may be on the chopping block for layoffs amid this economic downturn, okay? These performance reviews are gonna be important. These performance reviews are gonna be very important. Bamboo HR, performance management software said, the number of employers signing up for performance review service jumped 30% in July from last year, according to the Wall Street Journal. That's a big jump, guys. That is a big jump. Companies are saying, we know hard times are coming. We need the high performers to stay with us. We need the low performers to get their ass out. God damn! <laughs> and if you are a low performer, you may be given your pink slip. And then this is what you're gonna be saying. Damn. That's may that's what may happen. Now, I don't want that to happen, and I think that's why it's important for you to be prepared for these performance reviews. That's why it's important for you to have a career coach. It's important for you to have a career coach so that you are prepared for these things. Okay? A performance review should be part of an ongoing dialogue between an employee and their manager, not a surprise bombshell. Folks that I coach. They make sure that they have one-on-ones with their manager every single week. And they are reporting on the objectives. And they're tooting their horn. And they're getting feedback. 
So when a performance review comes around, they're going to be like Brother Damien getting that 43% promotion, being told that he is one of the best project managers that ever worked in that organization. Doesn't have to sit back and wait. He already knows. His managers already tell him in this. Don't wait. Be proactive. That's what career coaching allows for you to do. Be proactive, guys. Even if your manager hasn't set up a performance review yet, it is in your best interest to ask for one, okay? If you're a new employee and your company doesn't have a 90-day performance review baked in, you should create one. One of the things that I tell my coaching clients is this. You go into a new company, you're going to a new company, excuse me. When you go into a new company, you wanna make sure that you create a 30, 60, 90 day plan. And that is a way for you to be proactive. And every 30 days, you're reporting back to your manager. You're doing it weekly, but every 30 days, you're having a review of what you were able to accomplish in the 30 days, what feedback you're getting and so forth. That's being proactive. That's taking control of your career. 90 days comes around, you already know where you stand, what you already accomplished, what more you have to do, even measuring your objectives. That's a performance review. That's really a performance review. Pierce who is the author of a book on how to advance your career called I Can, I Will, Watch Me, How Not to Be Overlooked and Underpaid or Undervalued. Go and check that book out. I'm gonna pick it up. Don't wait until a year has passed to know you're doing something wrong. And many people today, many of you maybe even watching this show, don't know where you stand in your organization that you work for. Don't know where you stand with the manager that you report into. So to reduce some of the anxiety first termers may feel, practice ahead of the review. Many people do mock interviews of some sort or mock preparation for your performance reviews just to get the anxiety out because to some people getting feedback, especially if it's not positive, that may create a level of anxiety. But it's good to know ahead of time than waiting a full year, waiting six months, waiting nine months, wherever it is, to get that feedback. Now, don't get me wrong, it's a poor ass manager if you aren't getting your feedback. It's a poor manager. But we know in the world today, in companies, that the majority of managers, they aren't even giving the tools that they need to become a better manager. So put it on your, your responsibility to make sure you're getting what you need and reporting up. That's why I always talk about managing up. Make sure that you're giving or you're getting the help that you need throughout your career. And don't wait for your manager, because many of the managers in companies are poor. They don't set up one-on-ones with you if you don't put it on their calendar. They don't consistently stick to it. They don't think about performance reviews until it's the last minute. If you don't talk about yourself, they're not going to. They're gonna create their own narrative to who you are as a person, unless you share that information with them. That's the whole point of managing up, okay? But this article is saying, if you're new to performance reviews, maybe one of the things that you wanna do is to practice in a performance review. Practice with peers or coworkers. Understand what the process is like. One of the things that they're saying in here as well is in your performance review, the preparation for performance review shouldn't start the week before, okay? Employees should continuously be logging their accomplishments even if the review is months away. That's why I always tell you guys, have a brag book. Have a brag book on the things that you have accomplished. When you're talking to your managers one on, in your one-on-ones, talk about it. Talk about it to your peers. If you close that deal, talk about it. If you were able to reduce some sort of cost, talk about it. If you are able to give people back more time because of a process you implemented, talk about it. Share your accomplishments. Write down the things that you have accomplished and talk about it and keep it updated because ultimately if you're not telling that story, nobody else is gonna tell that story. Share your accomplishments and don't just wait for the week before or the day before the meeting because here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna forget all the things that you've done. That's not gonna paint you in a good light. If you say, you know, throughout a whole year, all you did was like two things. But if you look back at the entire year, you did a number of things. So make sure you write it down. Your brag book. That's what I like to call it, your brag book. And this article says that you're not bragging, you're just informing. You're also celebrating your success. That's another way to put it. I call it a brag book, but ultimately what you're doing is you're celebrating your success and you're telling people about it. And the person that you should tell, the people in charge, your managers, your peers, and so forth. Listen and learn. Listen and learn in your performance review. A performance review is time to listen and be self-reflective. When you sit there and listen, it shows that you are mature, you're self-aware, and you're open to feedback. Feedback is a gift. I can tell you this right now. Talk to a good client of mine this week. Yesterday morning, one of our first coaching calls, he mentioned how the organization felt towards him and what he thought the organization felt towards him. It wasn't until he started having those one-on-one -on -one meetings and starting to get feedback that he knew where he stood. He was like, Antoine, it was all created in my head. It was all created in my head. That was my own fault. 
because I wasn't asking for the feedback. I never asked for it. Now I know how to ask for it and I receive it. And now I don't have this, oh, what did they think of me? What did they think of me? Now he knows. Now he knows. Feedback is a gift. And when you receive constructive criticism, that negative feedback, as one may say, ask your manager to tell you what you should have done in this scenario, okay? If you receive negative feedback, ask the question, what is it that you should have done? Now, you probably already know, especially if you've been working with me as a coach or working with some other you know, folks as a coach and so forth. You probably already know to do that. But if you're new to this, this is your first time hearing this, when somebody gives you constructive criticism, ask the way that they would have liked it done, right? And the good thing, the way to do that, the reason to do that is so that you can show the person that you're reporting into that you understand their feedback and that you will show an improvement the next time you guys talk about it again or something along those lines. Give feedback as well. The performance review shouldn't be a one-sided conversation, but instead a collaborative process. The career and leadership coaches all say this. It should be a collaborative process. In some cases, this means employees should be prepared to tell their managers how they could better lead, right? If your manager isn't giving you everything that you need, it's time for you to speak up as well. It's not just a one-sided, hey, you need to get better, Antoine. You're not doing that well. You can also give feedback to the other person that's giving you that feedback as well. So make it a collaborative process. The goal of a performance review is to help you understand where you are, how you're doing, how you can work better with your manager and your team and so forth. So it's a collaborative process and make sure that you give feedback to the individuals or the individual who's giving you the feedback and responsible for your performance review, okay? I just wanted to make sure I hit that one because it's important. Performance reviews are coming. You already saw the increase in the data. Companies are signing up for them, for the software solutions and so forth. It increased by 30% in July. If your, t your organization isn't doing it now, they may be doing it in the future. Prep ahead of time. Book a coaching session with me if you don't know how to prep. Make sure that it's not a surprise where you stand when you have your performance review. That means you should understand where you stand with your manager by having weekly one-on-ones, talking about your objectives, making sure you got your brag book and you're celebrating your success and telling people about your success. And you'll see the performance review will come around and guess what? It's time to give people raises. Instead of you getting a 2% and 3%, because they've quiet fired you, now you're getting a 17%. Like our brother Greg, you're getting a 22%. You're getting that promotion when things for other people aren't going the right way. Brother Noah's getting a raise when his company is laying off people. Other people in the company that I work for are getting raises when contractors potentially may be laid off. Microsoft, so forth. So if you are ahead of it, you know where you stand, you're going to make more money. 17% raise, 22% raise, 10% raise is good. Now, when you're at the 2 and 3% and so forth, you may be quietly fired, man. You may be quietly fired, okay? All right, so I wanted to hit on that one. I wanted to hit on that one. Let's talk about CEOs now, guys. Let's talk about CEOs, okay? 